Welcome to part three of the five-part Intellios item writer training webinar, ARDMS and APCA item writing guidelines. Here are some things to consider when writing your items. The first thing you will likely try to write is the stem. As you may recall from part two, the stem is the question part of the item. Remember, a good stem should stand on its own, such that upon reading the stem and viewing any visual information, like charts or images, an exam taker who has content mastery might be able to anticipate the correct answer before reading the options. Don't write an item which requires information from a previous item. Some exams contain scenario type questions, where a scenario is described and the information in that situation can be used to answer two or three questions that follow. All of the items on our exams are randomized, and therefore items cannot be dependent on each other. You should also try to keep your stems concise. Stems should focus on one fact or concept without a lot of irrelevant information to sort through. Let's look at some examples. Heart attacks are the number one cause of death in the U.S., and coronary artery disease is preventable to some degree. What is a risk factor for premature coronary artery disease? It is likely some test takers already know the answer to this question, so it passes the first test. However, the entire first sentence, while true, is not essential to be able to answer the question. Now let's look at the answer choices. Even someone without medical training could probably rule out some of these distractors, like cancer, as it is not typically related to heart disease. To make this a better question, you should eliminate unnecessary information in the stem and ensure that all the distractors are plausible. A stem should be written as a positive expression. Using negative words like accept or not create confusion. Which would not cause the commonly recognized two-dimensional and Doppler findings associated with vascular stenosis? Negative stems like this one not only require the candidate to understand the content, but also want them to have the ability to work through the negative to get to the correct answer. That is not the skill we are trying to assess. Furthermore, one would not be able to identify the correct answer without reading the response options. To improve this item, reword the stem to avoid the negative. And be sure you're using correct terminology, so systolic acceleration instead of fast acceleration during systole. This slide says avoid excessive use of measurements and numerical values, but it might be more correct to say be careful how you use numbers and be sure you're only asking about a professionally accepted absolute standard. Otherwise, it can be problematic. For instance, this question asks, what are the normal measurements of a uterus? Which is troubling for several reasons. First, uterine size can depend on many factors. Also, one could easily make a case for more than one of these answer choices being the correct key. So, if you do have a measurement that you think it would be important for every entry-level candidate to know, it would be better to include that measurement in the stem so that you're talking about a specific patient profile rather than all women everywhere. At some point you may write an item where it makes sense to have numbers in the distractors, and that's fine. Just be careful if you have numerical ranges like in this example. Be sure the ranges don't overlap or you will have multiple keys. In this case, there are two keys. Between 2 and 10 millimeters and less than 10 millimeters are both correct. We can fix this by asking a more specific question. Which measurement is the upper limit of normal for the cisterna magna in the second and third trimesters? By clarifying which stage of pregnancy and defining the upper limit threshold, you end up with an item that is more correct. Crafting your answer choices requires just as much work as crafting a good stem, if not more. Here are a few things to keep in mind when writing your answer choices. The best way to select distractors is first to make sure all the answer choices relate to the topic and to each other. For example, if the STEM asks about an abnormality, then all four answer choices need to be abnormalities. If one of the distractors is unrelated, it will be implausible, thus easily eliminated, thereby increasing the chance that someone who has not mastered the content will be able to identify the key through process of elimination. 
You should also capitalize the first word in each response. Spell out acronyms, even if you think most people would know the term by the acronym alone. For example, HCG. Write the full medical term, then put the abbreviation in parentheses. If it's possible, try to use distractors of similar length. If one answer is obviously longer or shorter than the rest, it could tip off the test taker to immediately select it or reject it. However, there is no need to use periods at the end of your answer choices. Most answer choices will not be complete sentences and therefore won't require a period. Also, don't teach in the responses, or in the STEM for that matter, by defining concepts that should have already been learned. And of course, don't give unintended clues about the correct response, such as using similar wording in the STEM and the key. Again, the idea is to make sure that no answer sticks out like a sore thumb. There are a lot of things to remember, but don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. Let's look at some first drafts of items like this one, and see how they can be improved. First, let's examine the stem. To observe blood flow in the heart, you should use. This stem is a statement, or fill in the blank. Our stems need to be in the form of a question. Also, we don't use personal pronouns like I or you. Please be sure to use correct medical terminology as well. To rework this item, try beginning your stem with which or what so that it clearly asks a question. Which scanning method is best for evaluating cardiac blood flow in an adult heart? Now let's look at these distractors. Even without the stem, the fourth distractor stands out as being different from the rest. It will likely provide a cue to the test taker to select it as the key or eliminate it from consideration. Upon reading the stem, you can see that the question asks which scanning method. Unlike the others, reverberation is not a scanning method and thus a poor distractor. For a more plausible option, choose another scanning method, in this case, another type of Doppler, such as continuous wave Doppler. Did you notice that Doppler is repeated in each of the responses? We can eliminate the extra wording by editing the stem to include the word Doppler, asking which Doppler method is best for evaluating cardiac blood flow in the adult heart, allows for more streamlined answer choices. The edited question now follows the ARDMS and APCA style guide. Let's try another one. The Doppler waveform seen with a normal ECA is. This stem once again does not end in a question mark. Second, the writer has used the abbreviation ECA instead of the term external carotid artery. We can rephrase the stem so that it asks a question and we can spell out external carotid artery with the abbreviation in parentheses for reference. Which Doppler waveform is consistent with a normal external carotid artery is a much better stem. These distractors need work too. As you can see, there's a lot to read through and think through. When you do read them, you can see that the item writer is teaching in the distractors by defining the different types of Doppler waveform. They also contain punctuation, which is not required at the end of our answer choices because, as is the case here, they are rarely complete sentences. Furthermore, while the word Doppler is always capitalized, there is no need to capitalize any of the other words in this stem except the first word. By defining the terms, the author has also used similar wording in many of the answer choices. Since the stem already contains the words Doppler waveform, it is redundant to include the same words in the answer choices. Removing the redundancies will leave you with more concise answer choices. We have now edited this question so that it follows ARDMS and APCA style guidelines. This also concludes part three. Please continue to the next module.